the TikTok bill? Is it a Patriot Act for the 21st century or the latest swing at the Chinese Communist Party? All that and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Create Your Own Life Show. I am your host, Jeremy Ryan Slate, the CEO and co-founder of Command Your Brand. We help our clients to combat cancel culture by placing them on the right podcasts and new media. And you can grab our new PR book, ranked number one on Amazon over at bestpodcastbook.com. Reminder, if you are brand new to this channel, to like this video, leave us a comment, and smash that subscribe button if you support liberty, freedom, and want to build a better future. And uh, today's episode is an interesting one because I'll be honest with you guys, I have been on both sides of this issue. I have seen both sides of this issue and I am still very, very conflicted. That issue is the TikTok bill. It's come up for a vote in the set in the house. It's passed the house. Um, as I record this, since it's being recorded on Friday, you guys are going to see this on Monday. It is going to the Senate for a vote next And that will determine what the rest of this process has looked like. But I can see both sides of this issue. The the first being the Patriot Act is probably one of the single worst things to ever happen to the American people. And I guess the other side of it is, though people may not agree with me and you may not agree with me, I do think the CCP And Maoist communism is one of the greatest single threats to our country. It's corrupting our politicians. It's changing how our economy focuses. It is a latest Cold War that we are fighting. And so when you look at that, I can see both sides of the issue. And I wanted to do a lot of research on this one. So I've listened to a lot of media. I've read a lot of different things. And... I'm going to go through a series of articles. I'm also going to go through the bill language here as well. My goal with this episode is not to convince you of anything. It's to give you all the differing viewpoints that are out there to give you some information to make a better, more informed decision of what you ask your, I guess in this point, senator to do since it is going to the Senate. And um, if the Senate does change the bill language, it'll have to go back to the House. The House will have to vote on it again, and then it goes to the president to get signed. So there is still quite a bit of legislation that has to happen here. So you, as the voter, still have an ability to swing either way on this one, depending on on what you believe and what you think. So the first thing I want to start with to kind of lay the groundwork here, and I've looked at a lot of different sources on this one to try and decide what this one means. Um, so the f- some of these sources, um, I've tried my best to just get some data from these. And uh, the first one I'm going to pull up is CNN. So I apologize, fake news, but this article is actually pretty decent. A bill could ban TikTok across the US. Here's what you need to know about today's House vote and the app's future. The U.S. House of Representatives voted Wednesday to pass a bill that would lead to a nationwide ban against TikTok Here's what you need to know about it. So who voted for the bill? The House vote was 352 to 65 with 50 Democrats and 15 Republicans voting in opposition. And that's one of the things I was a little concerned about because whenever there's a very bipartisan support for something, to me, that's a red flag. And it says something strange is happening here. Um, And it says why the bill passed. Lawmakers are supportive of the bill that argue that TikTok poses a national security threat. What the legislation would do, the bill would prohibit TikTok from U.S. app stores unless the social media platform used by roughly 170 million Americans is spun off from ByteDance. ByteDance is the parent company of TikTok. Um, And it would give them roughly five months to sell TikTok If not divested by that time, it would be legal for app store operators such as Apple and Google to make available for download. So, and and I guess let's give you what TikTok says about it before I give you a little bit more data on this. TikTok has called the legislation attack on constitutional rights, uh, the freedom of expression for its users. Chinese foreign ministry called the bill an act of bullying in a video posted on X. Um, 
CEO Steve Chu thanked the community of TikTok users and said the company had invested in, in keeping user data safe and free from outside manipulation. Okay, so there's a few things we've got to discuss here before we get into bill language. Um, the first being, as we saw with what happened with different you know, conservative apps being in the app store and getting removed, that is a real red flag of things getting removed from the app store. That is something that concerns me. You look what happened at Parler. You look at the threats on X. The other issue here as well um, is the data. There's been a really big... And, and Congress previously had a hearing about this. Um, if you haven't checked out the Congressional Dish podcast, uh, Jen Briney does an excellent job looking at the hearings on this one. Um, I would go back and check out her episode on that. I'll make sure I link that up in the description of this video. But there's been a real confusion, and I, and I think it's, it's purposeful, as to where data is actually stored and who has access to it. Currently, ByteDance, TikTok in this case, claims that data is stored in servers in Texas. However, due to how laws are written in China around Chinese companies, it is thought that the CCP could have access to that United States-based user data. So that's an issue as well. Now, when you're looking at it from a national security perspective, if you look at a lot of the woke agenda and things like that, they are coming from TikTok. We are seeing a lot of those things coming from there. And the bipartisan support, I think, once again, this is my opinion, I could be wrong, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. I think it's because there's been a groundswell of support on social media for Palestine against Israel in that conflict. And a lot of it supposedly has been driven by TikTok. So I think that's interesting as well. So that's kind of the, the groundwork of what we have here. The bill passed the House. The bill goes to the Senate next. And the Senate can make edits to the bill, make changes, in which case, once they pass it, it has to go back to the House. Then the House would have to pass it again. And after going through both houses, it would go to the president for a signature where the president could sign it or veto it in that case. Now, let's take a look at bill language. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I had a lot of trouble in finding bill language for this bill because all the different news sources talked about the bill, no one linked to it, and no one quoted it, which is a little strange to me. Um, so this isn't a long bill, but I'm going to go through um, a good deal of it here as well, just so that you understand it. So this is actually from congress.gov. This is HR, so House Resolution 7521. Um, to protect the national security of the United States from the threat posed by the foreign adversary controlled applications, such as TikTok and any other successor application or service, and any other application or service developed or provided by ByteDance Limited or any entity under the control of ByteDance Limited. And once again, this is the House bill, the Senate bill will most likely be different. Uh, section one, short title, this act is called the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Fun title. And one of the, the things I wanted to get into previously as well is, is a lot of media I've listened to too has said, well, we've seen by the Twitter files like how much access the intelligence agencies, the Justice Department, the FBI has to our data. Well, are they just concerned that there's another app out there that's getting use that doesn't have that they don't have access to the way they have access to these other companies? So that's something that could definitely be brought up. Is this really just Congress being upset that there's competition in town? That could be said. Um, all right, so let's go through some of the. I'm going to link this bill up in the description so you guys can can read the whole thing. Um, but I want to go through some of the most important parts here. <clears throat> All right, so in general, the prohibition of federal adversary controlled applications, it shall be unlawful for an entity to distribute, maintain, or update, or enable the distribution maintenance of a foreign adversary controlled application by carrying out within the land or maritime borders of the United States any of the following. A, providing services to distribute, maintain, or update such foreign adversary controlled application, including any source code of such application. 
by means of a marketplace, including online mobile application stores, through which users within the land or maritime borders of the United States may access, maintain, or update said application. B, providing internet hosting services to enable the distribution, maintenance, or update of such foreign adversary-controlled application for users within the land and the maritime borders of the United States. Applicability. As in the case of an application that satisfies the definition of a foreign adversary controlled application pursuant to subsection G3A, beginning on the time date that is 180 days after the enactment of this act, and B, the case of an application that satisfies the definition of a foreign adversary controlled to subsection G. 3B, the beginning of that date is 180 days after the relevant determination of the president of such subsection. Um, data and information portability to alternative applications. Before the date on which the prohibition under the subsection applies to foreign adversary controlled applications, the entity that owns or controls such applications shall provide upon request by a user of such application within the land or maritime borders of the United States to such to such user all the available data related to the account of such user within respect to the application. So basically, if, if a user requests it, they have to be able to see their data and how their data is used. Um, and I, I believe um, American social media doesn't have that sort, sort of a, um, a legislation on them. I believe in Missouri v. Biden, they've been looking at some of that, but I, it doesn't I don't believe that um, that has passed. Um, I'm going to skip the exempt exemptions section and get to the enforcement section. Um, civil penalties, a foreign adversary controlled application violations. An entity that violates the subsection shall pay subject to a civil penalty in the amount not to exceed an amount that results from multiplying 5,000 by the number of users within the land of the maritime borders of the United States have access. So basically, they would take the number of users on the platform and multiply by $5,000. So that's pretty expensive. Data and information violations. An entity that violates subsection B shall be subject to pay civil penalty in the amount not to exceed um, the results from multiplying $500 by the number of users. So that's the data penalty. So that, that, that's, there's a lot, uh, quite a few penalties here. Um, actions by attorney general. All right, this isn't really as pertinent here. All right, so definitions, I think this is an important part here. Controlled by a foreign adversary. The term controlled by a foreign adversary means with respect to a covered company or entity that such company or entity is A, a foreign person that is domiciled or headquartered in or has its principal place of business in or is organized under the laws of a foreign adversary country. B, an entity with respect to the foreign person or combination of foreign persons described in subparagraph A, directly or indirectly, owns at least a 20% stake. C, a person subject to the direction or control of a foreign person or entity described in the paragraph. So that's somebody that has to like basically register as a foreign agent, right? Like if you're an American citizen, um, but you're working for another government, such as, um, oh gosh, what's her name there that used to work for the Disinformation Governance Board is now a registered agent of the British government, funny enough. If you appreciate the work that we do here and you want to support this show, the biggest way you can do that is by supporting the products that we know, use, and love, and that I recommend for you here on the show. The first that I want to talk about is MyPillow, literally one of my favorite products. The MyPillow Classic is what I use every single night. It's handled a lot of my neck pain, a lot of my back pain. As you guys know, I've been a competitive powerlifter since my early 20s. I've retired from that, but I still take pretty good care of myself, and I'm still pulling some heavy weights as I pulled 500 last week on deadlift. And uh, our favorite product from when we travel is actually the MyPillow Travel Pillow. And it's one of the things that we actually give to absolutely everybody. It is a great product to fall asleep on. So if you want to go to MyPillow.com slash C-Y-O-L, there's some really great holiday deals over there. You can get up to 66% off of select products. Also, one of the biggest changes in my life over the years has been handling a lot of the parasites in my body. A number of years ago, I did a cleanse with uh, Dr. Jason Dean, and we removed these things called liver fluke from my body. They were actually eating my liver. It was kind of crazy. 
And every few months, I do either a parasite cleanse or his full moon detox that he's doing right now. So if you want to head over to bravetv.store slash C-Y-O-L and uh, grab some of his amazing products over there. I know he has a great holiday special going on right now as well. Support our sponsors. They help the show to continue and they help us to do what we're doing. And we could not do it without you. And you could do it just by uh, using the power of the purse and uh, supporting the products that we love. Thanks. All right. So covered company. In general, a covered company means an entity that operates directly or indirectly through the parent company, subsidiary, affiliate, a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application that permits a user to create an account or profile, generate, share, and view text, images, video, and real-time communications, has more than 1 million active monthly users, and at least two to three months preceding the date relevant to the termination of the president is made pursuant to the paragraph 3B. Enables one or more users to distribute, create, generate, or distribute content that can be viewed by others on the website, desktop application, or mobile application. Enables one or more users to view content generated by others. So they're basically describing a social media platform. They're saying that, because there's been a lot of discussion, well, does this apply to any website does this apply to, and basically it has to be a website where someone creates profile, logs in, can create content, other users can view that content and also create content and has to have more than a million users. The term covered company does not apply to an entity that operates a website, desktop application, or mobile application uh, whose primary purpose is to allow users to post reviews, business reviews, or travel information reviews. That's an interesting distinction. So like TravelZoo and uh, different things out there like that. Um, foreign adversary application, uh, foreign adversary controlled application. The term foreign adversary controlled application means a website, desktop application, mobile application, um, augmented or immersive technology application that is operated directly or indirectly through a parent company, subsidiary, or affiliate by any of the following. So it is very specific because people have said, well, could this apply to different websites? It's actually very specific. Any of ByteDance LTE or LT or ByteDance Limited, TikTok, a subsidiary or successor of the entity in that clause that is controlled by a foreign adversary or an entity controlled directly or indirectly by an entity defined in that clause. So it's actually, that's a very tight definition. So it's basically ByteDance Limited or TikTok. Those are the two things this is covered. So a covered company that is controlled by a foreign adversary and that is determined by the president to be a significant threat to national security of the United States um, by first posting a public notice of the determination, then a public report is made to Congress and submitted not less than 30 days before such a determination uh, describing the specific national security concern involved containing classified annex, description of what assets need to be divested or execute a quali uh, qualified divestiture. So B here does sound like it's a little open because it does say controlled by a foreign adversary. Well, how do you define foreign adversary? Um, and I guess we get into that here later, a little later on. Um, Okay, so foreign adversary country is a country which is specified in section 4872D2 in Title 10 of U.S. Code. Um, so let's look that up real quick and let's see what that means. All right, here we go. Uh, so this applies to the following countries. Uh, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation, or the Islamic Republic of Iran. So that's uh, basically what that definition means there. Now let's get back to our bill text here. Um, okay. Hosting, internet hosting service. The term applies to an internet hosting service, meaning a service through which a storage and computing sources are provided to an individual organization, accommodation, or maintenance. Um, okay, so qualified divestiture. The term qualified divestiture means a divestiture of a similar transaction that A, the president determines through an interagency process would result in the relevant foreign adversary control application no longer being controlled by a foreign adversary. The president determines through an interagency process that 
precludes the establishment of maintenance of any operational relationship with the United States operations and relevant foreign adversary applications. Uh, okay, and then judicial review is kind of the last part here. As you guys, if you guys want to read this bill in full, I'm kind of just skipping through to get to the relevant sections here. Uh, right of action, a petition of review in challenging this act or any action finding or determination under this act may be filed only in the United States Appeals Court of the District of Columbia. That is interesting to me, and I know other people have said it's not a problem, but the United States Appeals Court of D.C. is a very left-leaning organization. So that is something to, to really take a look at. Exclusive jurisdiction. United States Court of Appeals for District of Columbia Circuit shall have exclusive jurisdiction. Um, so that's basically the bill text. And I think that's interesting because it does provide a process for how it happens. It does provide a definition of who is a uh, foreign adversary covered nation. And it is very specific about TikTok and ByteDance Limited. So I think it is important to take a look at that. Um, there is some bill language I don't like. I think it could be tightened up a bit, but I don't think it's a bad bill um, looking at basically the language on it. So now that's our bill language. There's been, um, I know Thomas Massey and Rand Paul have had opinions on this where they said that um, this could be a Trojan horse and it could open us up to more website banning. Um, I do think the bill language is pretty tight. Um, once again, they they read this stuff all the time, so they would know better than I would. But it does sound like the bill language is pretty specific. Um, unless they pull one of those, you know, Trump is an asset of Russia type of things. I, I would imagine, I would hope that the evidence of something like that would have to be much tighter than somebody claiming it in the New York Times. So what does President Trump have to say about that? Um, so he posted on Truth Social on Wednesday, TikTok is less of a danger to the USA than Meta, Facebook, which is a true enemy of the people. They spent $500 million against me and our great Republican Party, lockboxes and all, and should never have been allowed to do that. TikTok didn't, like crooked Joe Biden, Facebook is a great threat to democracy and will only get bigger and stronger if TikTok is taken out. Do them both and restrict the money allowed to be spent on politics and lockboxes by Meta and Facebook. I don't think that is a bad idea. And as um, I know Missouri v. Biden is looking at this, I do think we need to rein in um, all of these social media companies and what they can do, can't do, and, and how they go after our data. Um, and it's just, I, it's different because it's interesting because it sounds like that's a different viewpoint than um, Trump has previously had on TikTok because he's always been pretty strong on it. So there's been a lot of discussion as well um, on Jeff Yass. Uh, it says the, so this is from, from NBC News. Who is Jeff Yass, the billionaire donor with investments in TikTok's parent company? Critics accuse Yass of bankrolling an army of lobbyists and orchestrating a bare knuckle pressure campaign to protect TikTok. Um, so I'm going to just kind of go through this a little bit. Uh, Yass co founded the Philadelphia based trading firm Susquehanna International Group, which owns a 15% stake in TikTok's China based parent company, ByteDance. Yass's personal share is 7%, uh, worthly, worth roughly $21 billion. And um, there's a note here that says as well, um, in the 2022 midterm elections, he donated 47 million to Republican candidates. Now, I would like to know what he dedicate, what he donated to Democrat candidates too, because there's been a lot of bipartisan support behind this, and you have to look at where your news source is coming from. So this is coming from NBC News. He was also a big funder of Ron DeSantis, interestingly enough, as well. Um, so definitely do some more research on Yas, but. I'm going to go over now to, um, this is from the nationalpulse.com. So shout out to um, Raheem Kassam of the National Pulse. Um, and he's citing a interview with Laura Loomer uh, on Bannon's war room. Um, investigative reporter Laura Loomer has slammed TikTok apologists in the U.S. Congress as bought and paid for by vested interests willing to sell their country out like a bunch of, quote, cheap hookers. So I guess that said as only Laura Loomer can say it. Um, so when she's talking about this, she says Rand Paul didn't disclose the fact that he received $2.3 million from Jeffrey Yass, um, adding that 
that Mike Lee also received a max donation from the billionaire as well. Paul has reportedly received over $10 million from Jeffrey Gass, whose stake in China-based TikTok parent company ByteDance is worth around $33 billion since 2020. That's a slightly different number than we saw in that CNN article, but they could be combining um, what his company owns and what he owns as well. So I'm going to link this up in the show notes as well, since this is pretty interesting. I, I do tend to put a lot of faith in what Rand Paul says, since I know he's a very good civil libertarian, but it is interesting to see um, where the money flows. And I think you have to understand that when these guys are donating money, they're doing it typically through a super PAC and they're donating to a lot of different politicians. So I'd like to see what that full full list looks like as well. Um, okay, so the CCP and Bite Dance this is one of the last things I'm going to go through here. Um, so this is from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Um, so I really don't know the leanings of this site, but it's basically um, five facts about TikTok. Uh, ByteDance is close. So number one, ByteDance is closely connected to Chinese military industrial complex. ByteDance is not just a tech company; it is a cog in China's vast military machinery. In 2018, backed by Chinese Ministry, China's Ministry of Science and Technology, ByteDance established the Beijing Academy for Artificial Intelligence. Um, so that's interesting. Number two, ByteDance is bound by Chinese state surveillance laws. Uh, China Chinese law requires ByteDance to adhere to CCP ideology. China's national intelligence laws of 2017 obligates all Chinese organizations and citizens to collaborate with state intelligence operations, effectively co-opting private entities into extensions of the government's surveillance apparatus. Number three, ByteDance board is beholden to Beijing. The CCP doesn't just influence ByteDance from the shadows, it literally has a seat at the table. In the late 2010s, a consortium that included Cyberspace Administration of China, effectively the country's internet sensor, acquired a 1% stake in ByteDance, primary Chinese subsidiary. This is known as a golden share. It is small, but mighty, granting the state the power to appoint one subsidiary, subsidiaries three direct uh, board of directors. As a result, the CCP wields substantial sway over ByteDance operations, as in most Chinese companies. There's only two more of these. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of my thoughts on this, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, but number four, ByteDance spies on Americans and lies about it. This is, once again, This is uh, there's congressional hearings on this, so I do recommend you go check out Congressional Dish as... Um, Jen Briney's done a really great job actually playing the congressional hearings. So this is, um, we don't have data on this, so it's it's a little bit, um, it's controversial, I guess you could say. And then number five, ByteDance lavishly funds a political powerhouse in Washington. Well, that's to be known, and a lot of the social media companies do that as well. So that's not really different than what Facebook um, or um, any of these other companies are doing as well. So that's the data that I could find about this. And as I said, I can see both sides of this. It would be concerning to me whether this means more internet control. Um, I do think we need more disclosure on who's paying our politicians. And I think as well, we need more freedom from what social media companies and the government together can do to us. Because I think when you look at this, is, is it good for the CCP to have our data? No. But if this company is divested and bought by an American company, will they be forced to, just like Meta and Twitter before it became X and, and other companies have done, collaborate with the US government in controlling our thoughts and our speech and knowing more about us? So this does really open a can of worms. And I wanted to have this conversation to give you guys at least basically the data that's out there, open a conversation. And as I said, I'm on the fence on this one because I can see both sides on this. What do you think? Comment in this video. Shoot me an email, podcast at jeremyryanslate.com. Let's keep this conversation going. This is how a republic operates. We get these ideas out there. We talk about them. And then we let our, we let our representatives know. As I said, it's through Congress already. It has to go to the Senate, where it most likely, if it does pass, will pass with edits of some sort, meaning it has to go back to the House. So there is a bit of a, a runway here on this. But I think it's an important conversation to have. So thanks for hanging out today, guys. Remember to like this video, comment, and subscribe to this channel if you support liberty, freedom, and want to build a better future. Have a good one, everybody.